of coral rock. A child can shut this nine-ton gate with one finger. Furniture, walls, and objects of art, all carved from dense gray coral and moved into place as if by magic. By most calculations, it would take an army of skilled workers years to complete this task. It is astonishing to know that all this was a 28-year labor of love by one man with a collection of homemade tools and a fourth grade education. His name was Edward Leeds Skalnin, King of the Coral Castle. Cross this threshold to places of mystery. This is Homestead, Florida. In 1992, Hurricane Andrew leveled the city. But the fierce winds that shattered modern stores, homes, and offices, as if they were paper mache, couldn't blow a pebble from this marvel of construction. This reminded me of the seven wonders of the world, like Stonehenge or the, the pyramids. Completed in 1930, this solid rock valentine to unrequited love draws visitors from around the world. People seem to fall in love with the place. Yet, its very existence defies explanation. It's quite a mystery, and it still is a mystery. The greatest mystery of the Coral Castle has always been its creator, Edward Leeds Skalnin. How did he do this? How did he perform fantastic feats of engineering single-handedly? When I later learned that it was one man, one small man, I just, I, I was in disbelief. I, could, I couldn't imagine it being done. And while scientists and engineers scratch their heads and wonder how the Coral Castle came to pass, Many believe the man who served as king in this fairy tale like setting had special unearthly powers. Kay Vikas has been a tour guide at the castle for 25 years. He just had this special gift, but he said he knew the secret of weight and leverage, and he knew the way the pyramids were built. This would seem to be the work of a giant, but Edlied Skalnin always defied belief. He was a small man, only weighed 95 pounds. He never weighed over 100 in his whole life. And he always walked around with his head up like he was a tall person. The Coral Castle is an engineering mystery that has puzzled experts for 60 years. But the early life of its creator provides clues to its origins. Edward Leeds Scotland was born in 1887 in a small village near Riga, Latvia. He was the son of a hard-working farmer and knew at an early age the meaning of back-breaking work. When Ed left the farm, he was already a well-established mason and bricklayer. And at age 26, he knew it was time to start a family on his own. Ed proposed to the love of his life, Agnes Scuffs, who he lovingly referred to as Sweet Sixteen. Agnes accepted the proposal, only to decide that Ed was too old for her and too poor. She abruptly called off the wedding on the eve of their nuptials. Ed was crushed and slipped into depression. He believed you loved once in your life, and that's, uh, he was very heartbroken when she left him, and he never did marry. As far as we know, he never even had a, another girlfriend while he was here. In 1913, spurned by the love of his life and publicly humiliated to his fellow villagers, Ed had nowhere to turn, so he set his sights on America, perhaps to find adventure, but certainly to heal his broken heart. He traveled around for a few years. He went to California, Texas. He worked on the cattle drive. But it was a bitter winter in Canada as a lumberjack that took its toll on Ed's health. He picked up a touch of TB, and he heard Florida would be good weather year-round, so he settled on one acre in Florida City. He started to make furniture of the coral that we're on. We're on solid coral here, a couple of inches of soil, 4,000 feet of coral. But before Ed would begin the undertaking of what was to be his life's work, he made many trips to the local library 
Although Ed only had a fourth grade education, his thirst for knowledge was insatiable. He was often found in the library pouring through the books about the Great Pyramids. It seems impossible that Ed Lee Skalnan could divine the secrets that have stumped archaeologists and engineers for thousands of years. But armed with new knowledge, Ed began carving ancient dead coral out of his acre of land. The blocks he raised out of the ground were massive, some weighing as much as 30 tons. What is even more amazing is that the simple chain and tackle blocks he was using could lift only 10 tons. He accomplished this with nothing more than homemade tools, or so the legend goes. The neighbors were so amazed to see him move these rocks and make furniture and so forth. When they'd ask him how he could do it, he would just answer it. He knew the secret of weight and leverage and knew the way the pyramids were built. He never let anyone see him work. He often worked at night under lantern. It is thought that his heart was so badly broken that only something as immense and consuming as the castle could cure him. You see, he made beds and chairs and all kinds of things. He, he said it was his imaginary world for the family he never had. One of Ed's most outstanding testimonials of his enduring love for Agnes is the 5,000 pound love table. The Feast of Love Table is a big heart and a small heart in the center. It's two and a half tons. It's in Ripley's Museum in St. Augustine, a replica of it. Believe it or not, we usually had a wedding for every year that I can remember on Valentine's Day there. Ed's preoccupation with secrecy is well documented. Even the windows of his living quarters were constructed so that Ed could peer out, but it was difficult to see in. And when the Florida City Chamber of Commerce approved a new building subdivision to go in next to Ed's half-built castle, Ed knew it was time to move. And so, for perhaps the first time in Ed's life, he asked for help. He had a local farmer, Bob Biggers Hall, most of his coral pieces up from the one acre with his tractor. Ed had a homemade trailer. It was a chassis from an old Republic truck with rails mounted on it. When no one was looking, Ed would load and unload. And there is yet another sad theory why Ed decided to pull up stakes and move his coral kingdom. One afternoon, Ed found himself surrounded by thugs, determined to beat the secret out of him. At five feet tall and 100 pounds, Ed could only endure the savage beating. In the end, the hooligan spared his life. It might even be said that Ed won the fight because the secret he was willing to die for remains intact to this day. He took the secret to the grave with him. All he left behind was his legacy the castle itself. When we return, modern engineers offer amazing theories as they attempt to solve the mystery of Edley Scoundrel and the Coral Castle. If you like your world's best wet and wild, grab your suit and hit the chutes, because the Travel Channel's got the nation's top 10 water slides, and they're totally tubular. Then, catch a wave as the Travel Channel counts down the country's best beaches. From the Carolinas to California, we've got the coasts with the most. World's best, America's best water parks and America's best beaches. Wednesday, starting at 9 on the Travel Channel. Get ready to go west and go wild. From raging rapids to raging clubs, we'll show you what makes for the ultimate Arizona adventure. Incredible Arizona. Sunday, July 14th at 9, only on the Travel Channel. People are buying thousands of new Oldsmobiles every month. Which explains why we're building thousands every month. And right now, you can get $1,000, $2,000, or $3,000 in consumer cash on new 2002 Oldsmobiles, plus the confidence of the General Motors Protection Plan. Are you in the market? Get in an Oldsmobile, backed by GM. Wish your dentures were this comfortable? Bob's are. He got a unique denture adhesive. 
Seabon. Water for hold, love it for comfort. Only Seabon clings wall to wall with three strong adhesives in a thin velvet soft wafer. No gaps, no ooze, and cleanup's easy. Seabon, buy it for hold, love it for comfort. on your terms. Visit orbits.com for the most flat options and the most low fares. Visit orbits.com today for the most low fares to planet Earth. Um, everyone has money problems from time to time. So when I decided to do something about mine, I chose Brighton Credit Management. Their personal one-on-one -on -one consultants work with you to dramatically reduce the interest on your credit cards. Lower your payments by one-third or more and give you cash back. Just for paying on time every month. So if you have money problems like I did. I did. I did. Call Brighton Credit Management. Debt free and cash back? That's Brighton Credit Management. Call 800-628-0033. Are you looking for above average returns and willing to take a risk in order to achieve them? Commodity investing involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for everyone. I'm Patrick T. Parker from Barkley Financial. Right now, we're making a major recommendation in the energy markets, and specifically, unleaded gasoline. Could gasoline prices be poised to move higher? We think so. Discover the power of futures and options by calling Barclay Financial right now for a free audio, video, or CD-ROM on options investing. Call the toll-free number on your screen right now. We reveal the hidden side of Sin City. How did this infamous hotel alter the course of Vegas history? It's just one of Travel Channel secrets. Las Vegas, Destination The Strip, to 99, only on the Travel Channel. Florida's Coral Castle is an enigma that has defied and fascinated experts for 60 years. Christopher Dunn is an aerospace engineer and is considered an authority on the Great Pyramids as well as the Coral Castle. Dunn's extensive background in physics and engineering has brought him to the conclusion that traditional notions of how the pyramids were built may be a gross oversimplification of something much more sophisticated. The theories that are proposed by Egyptologists do not necessarily uh, fit the evidence. Ed Lee Scalman claimed that he knew the secrets of how the pyramids were built. And because I was on a long line of people who actually question conventional theories about the pyramids, I decided I would actually go and research Ed Lee Scalman. What Dunn discovered at the Coral Castle still amazes him to this day. The nine ton swinging gate. A 18,000 pound rock with a perfectly round straight hole drilled through the center of it that pivots perfectly with just the touch of a finger. Engineers have looked at that for years wondering you know, just how he was able to do that. In fact, the nine-ton gate needed servicing after a mere 60 years of use. It took a crew of 10 and a 20-ton crane just to get at the delicate yet sturdy bearing the gate rode on. But even modern equipment couldn't improve on Ed's original design. When they got it back together, it was not perfect anymore. They could, they could not get it perfected. But Dunn's admiration for Ed extends throughout the castle. For him, it's one astonishing achievement of art and function after the next. The 30-ton uh, rock, I mean, that's an amazing, amazing feat. The Polaris telescope. It's a very heavy rock with a hole drilled like a gun sight in the center of it. And you can actually view Polaris. So how did the little man from Latvia cut, move, position, and maneuver such colossal pieces of rock? Christopher Dunn's theories border on engineering heresy. In my opinion, it's not possible uh, without actually making the stone lighter or reducing the gravitational pull on, on the stone. And I believe that Ed Lee Scalman has been able to do that. What Dunn suggests, that Ed implemented an anti-gravitational construction tool 
may smack of science fiction hocus pocus, but the engineer firmly believes the evidence of Ed's mysterious device is actually hiding in plain sight and can be seen in this rare photo of Ed at work. In the picture, you'll see some tripods that were made out of telephone poles. On the top of the tripods are these boxes. And leading from the boxes, you'll see a cable coming down to the block. I believe that he had in the boxes radio tuners. What he was doing was actually transmitting from his workshop. And he was working with the residents of the block, the residents of the atoms, of course, in the block. He was working with electromagnetism. If one believes the theory of radio tuners realigning the electromagnetism of these huge coral blocks, then where did the power come from? In Ed's workshop far in the back, there is a very primitive yet powerful electrical generator built out of junkyard parts. Dunn suggests that this was Ed's source for producing the electricity needed to achieve the atom realignment chain reaction. Dunn goes on to suggest that the chain block and tackle supposedly used were nothing more than a ruse, a prop, to throw off the looky-loos curious to discover Ed's secret. If you'll see in the photographs, you have a tripod and you don't see a block and tackle anywhere. The block and tackle is only designed to lift 10 tons. So there's a little shortfall there between 10 tons and 30 tons and actually uh, forming the work. Perhaps this theory of atom tampering explains how Ed was able to work with such incredible weight and avoid being crushed to death. Jorge Rivera is a structural engineer in Los Angeles. Although he subscribes to conventional theories of how Ed might have built his castle, he is still amazed by the scope and danger of such an undertaking. I design and build uh, skyscrapers in areas with high seismicity. These are life-threatening situations that, that I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I couldn't imagine him completing the project without having killed himself. I mean, we're talking about lifting pieces of block that are 13,000 pounds, 16,000 pounds, up 30 feet, and somehow precisely landing these things on top of other blocks. And the tools he used, the primitiveness of them, it's truly unbelievable. I mean, unimaginable that such a man could, could do that without hurting himself. The fact that Ed Leed Scalman survived his monumental undertaking is a factor that Christopher Dunn takes into account as a possible added piece of evidence that Ed was working outside the lines of any known construction methods. It's dangerous work, working with such large blocks of stone because they're so heavy. But if they're not that heavy, and in fact, if they can be moved uh, like a balloon, then you take the danger out of the project. One of the legends is that some children actually spotted Ed Lee Scalman with a rock floating in the air like a hydrogen balloon, and that was the description. Although the engineers may disagree on just how Ed built his coral castle, one constant remains evident, the castle itself. This castle is comprised of roughly 2,200,000 pounds of coral. That would be 1,100 tons. Just thinking about those kind of numbers, the fact that one man over 20 years was able to move, carve, build a castle is unthinkable. I did some calculations on projects of similar size that I'm currently working on. It would basically take something like 20 to 30 people working for two to three years straight to build such a thing. There have been several estimates of what it would take to build the Great Pyramid. They range from 10,000 people to 100,000. But if they had only 4,700 Ed Lee Scalmans, they could build the Great Pyramid at the same time. The arguments over how Ed built his bizarre complex of coral will undoubtedly rage on. Yeah, this is pretty comfortable. So will the public's fascination with the coral castle and the enduring mystery of its creator. I can't imagine that right right this man had. Cool. It amazes me. When we come back, 
Is this lifestyle guide written by Leed Skaldnin himself actually a codebook for the castle's secrets? The secret's out when the Travel Channel reveals the hidden side of Las Vegas. Tonight, uncover the true stories behind this diamond in the desert. We'll learn what turned a sleepy little town into the entertainment capital of the world. Plus, discover the secret that made gambling the city's most popular pastime. And find out how this infamous hotel altered the course of Vegas history. Travel Channel Secrets. Las Vegas. Destination The Strip. To 99. Only on the Travel Channel. How far will a small business go to reach new customers? All the way to cyberspace. Because small business is about working in new ways, we created a new way for them. Open the Small Business Network. New tools, services, and savings for a small business economy. From American Express. No, 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 I gotta call you back. Hello, Judith speaking. Ring a ding ding, Judy. Vegas here. Las Vegas? How did you get this number? Never mind that, Ted. What do you say you and me go hit the strip again tonight, huh? I can't. I can't. I have to finish these employee evaluations. Hey, baby, you can keep working, or you can start living. It's your choice. But that'd be really wild. <laughs> now there's the crazy dame I know. Extraordinary machines. From grocery getter to garbage grappler. From muscle car to mulching mutant mower. Discover the ultimate in twisted transformations. Monster Garage. Tonight at 9 Eastern and Pacific. Only on the Discovery Channel. If you're 55 or I'm Rick with Empire Glass. Let Empire Glass replace your cracked windshield and we'll still pay up to $100 of your comprehensive insurance deductible and we'll give you a certificate for a beautiful 14 karat diamond pendant necklace. And we'll now give you 24 free dinners to any El Paso Barbecue Company restaurant with any windshield replacement. So for the best windshields, including up to $100 off your comprehensive deductible and 24 free dinners to El Paso Barbecue Company, call Empire Glass today at 622-3033. Are you looking for above average returns and willing to take a risk in order to achieve them? Commodity investing involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for everyone. I'm Patrick T. Parker from Barclay Financial. Right now we're making a major recommendation in the energy markets and specifically unleaded gasoline. Could gasoline prices be poised to move higher? We think so. Discover the power of futures and options by calling Barclay Financial right now for a free audio, video, or CD-ROM on options investing. Call the toll-free number on your screen right now. Since its completion in 1940, Florida's Coral Castle has been a popular tourist destination. Ed Leed Scalman's favorite visitors were the many children that would come to see him. The, the kids come around, he'd show them around, he loved children, and he made that playground for them in there, the story of the three bears. And he'd cook hot dogs for them in his cooker. It also drew the attention of the U.S. government. After an exhaustive study of the castle, Colonel Carol Lake of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was quoted as saying, Lead Skalnin proved to all the world to see today that he knew the secrets of the ancients. But Ed did not always welcome Uncle Sam's visits. The government had paid him visits on numerous occasions and had walked away none the wiser for what he was doing. He had a particular mindset that was distrustful. He was afraid that his technology or his techniques would be uh, abused or misused, and that's why he kept it to himself. Ed believed in the power of the universe. As a stargazer and a student of the heavenly bodies, he often spoke of the harmony of the universe. 
and was so taken with the Floridian night skies that an entire section of his rock garden is dedicated to the carvings of the moon, Mars, and Saturn. Lead Skullman believed a man should work between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And he created this sundial to record that time span. It's accurate within two minutes. Ed was also a philosopher and wrote a book entitled A Book in Every Home. At first glance, it seems to be a message to Agnes, the love of his life. He writes that his girl had to be perfect. I don't think he would have ever accepted her if she ever did come over. I think he would have liked her to come and see him and say, yes, I had you in mind, but it's too late now. But depending on who you ask, the meaning of Ed's prose and verse vary greatly. It's a very unusual book, and it's full of sexist uh, comments about the role of women in society. And it, it's really odd. I mean, it doesn't make much sense when you read it. So I was thinking, well, what if it's a, a, a huge metaphor? What if Ed is actually saying, uh, how to raise a young lady, meaning how to raise a large block of stone. Is this a code book containing Leed Skalnin's engineering secrets? Unfortunately, like so much of Ed Leed Skalnin's life, the answer would be forever sealed on a hot Floridian summer afternoon. It was December 7th, 1951. Uncharacteristically, Ed shut down his tours for a day and hung a note on the entrance to the castle. It read, going to hospital. He rode his bike to the bus stop and boarded the bus to Miami. He died three days later from malnutrition. Not because he didn't have the food. There was plenty of food, but it was just that he just didn't seem to want to eat a lot in his later years. When the Dade County coroners performed an autopsy on Ed's body, they were startled to find no signs of the tuberculosis that had plagued him most of his life. It is believed that love has no boundaries, and wherever it exists, all things are possible. For the people that have spent nearly a lifetime studying and preserving the Coral Castle, one absolute truth is evident about the mysterious man and his house of coral. I think somewhere in his mind, he probably believed that his sweet 16 would suddenly wake up and realize what a mistake that she had made and come and find him. Unfortunately for him, that never happened. After being here all these years, I can say that no greater love that I've seen that a man would have for a woman. Had Edward Leed Skalnan really learned the secrets of ancient Egypt? Had he mastered the laws of physics? Some might say he simply tapped into a force older than the pyramids themselves, building this castle with the strength born of heartache and the power of eternal love. Horizontal stripes because you like them. A little freedom goes a long way.